With Michael Kaiser managing to score his Kaiser Impact Magnus variation, the game is now 2-1 in Bash of Munich's favor and growing even more intense, with only one point remaining for the victory of Vienna. One player seems to have been left behind in this match. What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Enemasu, and today we're going to be taking a look at Blue Lock Chapter 267, titled Golden Ticket. If you watched through today's video and find that you enjoyed yourself, please feel free to click that subscribe button, comment below your thoughts, and also join my community discord down in the description. Without further ado, let's find out what exactly this golden ticket is. Today's chapter starts us off as usual with intro text which states, Both teammates and opponents are left speechless as Kaiser's new weapon smashes into the back of the net. As the announcers begin to scream out in amazement over the Super Magnus impact they've just witnessed, we see players from both sides such as Shido, Kunigami, Rin, and even Zantetsu staring in awe. An interesting little detail is every player on the left side seems to be gritting their teeth in either determination or anger, meanwhile the right side all have their mouths hanging open in awe. As the back of Kaiser's jersey is then shown with him standing in place, the announcers scream out that despite facing some troubles early on in this match, Michael has done it. With the entire world tuned in and with a single strike, Michael Kaiser shows why he's considered as one of the best strikers in this generation. We get this awesome double spread of him clenching his fist in the sky, celebrating his goal while also showing off his blue rose tattoo. Nanase and Karasu are also angrily watching, talking about how Kaiser planned this all. However, Tokimitsu, this kid seems to be losing his mind, thinking about how impossible it is to stop Kaiser. Moving on from the opposing team's reactions though, Isagi Yoichi is then shown on page 3, watching Kaiser with his spiraling ego eyes. He's amazed at how Kaiser threw aside everything and made the ultimate sacrifice for his evolution, and also, probably how Majestic Bro was looking here. Charles' reaction is also briefly shown too to be one of immaturity and confusion because he seems to just disregard Kaiser's goal as lucky and a fluke. Maybe Shido can help him develop and appreciate others' goals, because this kind of mentality is what helps you develop and grow every match. Moving on from them, Yohiori then begins to approach Kyurajin, asking why exactly he passed to Michael Kaiser rather than Isagi. Turning around slowly, Kuro just responds saying that there was no real reason for this choice. He honestly believed both players were capable and going to score in that moment, and even admits that he could have easily passed to Isagi rather than Kaiser. The thing is though, Kurojin admits that he tends to align himself with the underdog, which explains a lot about his character and design. As Hiyori just stares along in confusion and shock, Kuro continues on to explain that if the underdog manages to win from his assist, all the credit will go to him. This is kind of hilarious to me, because Kura is not only calling Kaiser a loser here, but openly admits he's using his suffering to further his own agenda. Anyways, as Isagi then begins to walk up and eavesdrop on the conversation, Kura continues on to say that he constantly has the power to shift the scales with his borderline decisions. It's basically like reversed version of protagonist feeling, which even Hiyori is confused by as he just calls Kura a weirdo. Isaki Yoichi actually then goes on to ask Kura if he's only siding with Kaiser from now on, which to nobody's surprise, Kura says no. He'll all with anyone who could benefit him in the moment, and this time, it just so happened to be Michael Kaiser. Next time, who really knows? With Kyurajin walking away holding up two thumbs down, he assures Isagi and Yuri that up until the last minute, not even the gods will know who he'll choose to side with. I've been telling you, this man is the most badass side character we've seen yet, and now it's possible he'll even assist Isagi with the winning goal. Yoichi of course tells him to keep this in mind, as he's now figured out the Kyurajin's philosophy, and he'll add it to his mental vol. Using his jersey to wipe sweat from his face, Isagi says that while Kira did play a massive role with his assist, Kaiser changing his approach was ultimately the key to that play. He abandoned his obsession with Isagi and left Ness in the dust, instead passing to Raichi knowing that he needs value. Kaiser reverted to zero and showed that he was willing to work alongside anyone for a goal, even forcing Kunigami to assist him as he held back Shido. The finishing touch came with Kira's final pass as Kaiser just so happened to be lucky regarding Kira's philosophy. In that moment, he was the underdog and in a place of desperation, so Kira granted him that pass and luck shined upon him. Isagi then envisions a puzzle piece, and realizes that Kaiser must have a holistic ego type as he threw away everything in order to pursue results. His pure motivation is goals and victory, so he started from zero in order to reach his top performance. He realizes that this is just a surfer level analysis though, and in order to stop Kaiser, he'll need to collect more information about his mindset. The perspective then changes over to Alexis Nesto screaming out to Kaiser, as the Emperor turns his head with dead eyes. Ness of course begins to glaze his king by calling him fucking incredible despite not being the one to provide the final pass. Even though Kaiser still managed to shoot the ball as he did in training, he scored an insane Magnus impact without Ness's help. He even goes on to say that it seemed like God was on the side of Michael Kaiser as everything just happened to fall into place perfectly. 
He replicated the shot even better than in any of their training sessions. However, all Kaiser can do is just gaze back with his dead eyes. This then continues on telling Kaiser that he's destined to be the best striker. His work ethic is great. You know the gist, all the glazing. Kaiser then finally replies though, calling out to Ness, surprisingly thanking him for everything so far. The freedom Alexis Ness provided Kaiser allowed him to grow stronger and get this far, and this compliment causes a light to shine within Ness's eyes. His emperor is finally recognizing him and all of his efforts. However, the next words out of Kaiser's mouth are telling Alexis Ness that he no longer needs him. Tears begin to change from ones of happiness to confusion and sorrow, as Kaiser continues to say that this match showed him what he requires to grow. He no longer needs the freedom from Alexis Ness the Magician, so with a few final words, Michael tells Ness to find a new king and quit following him. This might be the most desperate and hurt we've ever seen Ness, as his face is quivering and he can't even get a word out. Walking away from Ness with an emotionless face though in one sentence, Michael Kaiser just says that he's times best in discomfort. To absolutely third party this depressing moment, Isagi seemed to be eavesdropping on all of this and has a realization. Due to Kaiser saying he thrives best in discomfort, Isagi now understands that depending on the environment, people can achieve varying levels of performance. Regardless of if you want it or not, there are varying circumstances and environments where different people thrive. People like Isagi are considered to have free egos, as they thrive in conditions where they're allowed to create the winning formulas they want whenever, with whatever. Noel Noah has not only done well to allow Isagi a very free system with a lenient bias, but also he's restricted Michael Kaiser enough to force him into this position where he had to revert from zero. On the other hand, we have people with restrictive egos, as they thrive in conditions with clearly defined objectives. They then work to faithfully achieve success within these objectives, or there are also types that thrive in conditions where they rebel against those objectives. If you combine these ego types with the concept of individualistic and holistic ego types, you manage to create a diagram to categorize egoists into one of four types. Isagi and Yuri are listed to be holistic and freedom types, as they both chase the world's ideals while thriving best in open environments. Bachira and Shido, of course, thrive best in open places, but instead of appeasing the world, they purely work to appease their own desire. As we then see Isagi fully breaking apart, the quality of the analysis has reached an all-time high regarding egoists. All that's left now is for him to pinpoint this awakened Kaiser's weakness and completely devour him. Speaking of Kaiser, he then begins to walk up towards Isagi and his Femboys, saying that he's more excited than he's ever been in his life. He's finally touching something with his right hand too rather than his left hand tatted one, which is an interesting detail I just wanted to point out. He shows the true version of himself to Yoichi while thanking him for this rebirth, but the main point of him approaching Isagi was to challenge him once again. Getting up close and personal, Kaiser sticks his finger out while assuring Isagi that this last goal will be the end of it all. We'll determine who's the king of our generation. Let's see who devours who, Yoichi. Both strikers have their spiraling ego eyes too, as Isagi tells him to bring it on, because if he can manage to crest Kaiser here, then he can grab the golden ticket that'll lead him to becoming the world's best player. As Isagi and Kaiser both walk in opposite directions with the final goal in mind, a monster lurks in the background, angered to be left behind. Itoshi Rin, the destroyer, only has one thought in mind, which is to kill both Isagi Yoichi and Michael Kaiser. As Rin covers his face for one more scowl of this chapter, all that we're left with is the outro text which says, Overshadowed by three of his rivals, Itoshi Rin sees this rage. As both teams wait for this game to restart, the aloof genius prepares to assert his dominance and announce himself as the world's best player. This outro text clearly points to an upcoming masterclass performance from Itoshi Rin, but aside from that, all that we're left with until next week's chapter is upcoming 268's title, Pressure. This more than likely is in reference to Itoshi Rin as well, and how with the game now at 2-1, PXG is under a lot of pressure to showcase their talent. Anyways, with that sadly being the end of today's chapter overview, I just want to thank you all so much for tuning into the channel. If you enjoy the videos I push out and would like to support me, please make sure to comment below your thoughts, feel free to click that subscribe button, and join my community discord down below. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all in the next video.